dial back into history, going back to the fall of 1968. There we are. Yes, it was October 22nd and 23rd at the Boston Tea Party, which was the happening place to hear live music in Boston. For three dollars, you could get a ticket to see the biggest names in show business. This particular weekend, Jethro Tull and the Jeff Beck group was going to be there. So, you know, I spent my three dollars and bought my ticket. So the first night, I'm there early. So I was walking around the tea party and I saw Henry Smith, the road manager for the Yardbirds. I said, Henry, how are you? He said, hey, mate, come on backstage and meet the lads. I said, okay. And we went backstage and there was Jeff Beck. He introduced me, Rod Stewart, Ronnie Wood who was playing bass and Mick Waller playing drums. Man, it was a thrill. Jeff had this beautiful 58 gold top Les Paul that he had used on the Truth album. He was warming up with it a little bit. Wow, he was so good. I was in awe. They had just finished their sound check and it was time to eat. So I walked back upstairs with them. Chinese food was brought in from the local Chinese restaurant. And the members of Jethro Tull were there too, all gathered around. So I met Ian Anderson and Martin Barr and all, all of the guys, you know, we were hanging out. And Martin and I became pen pals back in the day. You'd write a postcard overseas. So we exchanged addresses and so forth. So it came time for them to play. And I had the This Is Jethro Tull album. And the stand-up album was just about to come out if it hadn't been released already. Now, WBCN in Boston was the underground FM radio station that let everybody know what was happening. And in those days in your car, you just had an AM radio. So everybody bought these little FM converters and they put them in their glove box so they could hear and pick up WBCN and see what was going on. Now the Boston Tea Party was an old church, kind of in the Roxbury area. It actually had two locations. This was at the old church location. And boy, were there some good groups that came through there. The sound was great. Local bands like the Jay Giles Band and Quill and Harry Sandler, they were always in there on a Tuesday night at a jam session. I remember playing saxophone with the Jay Giles Band one night on a jam on a Tuesday night. So it had a great reputation for fantastic bands. And to have Jethro Tull and Jeff Beck on the same stage, the same night, two shows, are you kidding me? Wow! Jethro Tull played their first set and they did Cat Squirrel, which I knew Eric Clapton solo from it. And Martin launched into this five minute solo that was as good as Clapton. It just sounded fabulous. I was blown away by them and Ian Anderson on the, the flute with a one knee up in the air, you know. Now, Charles Laquadera was a DJ at WBCN and he did the greatest intros for the band. And he came out and put on a hell of an intro for the Jeff Beck group. I was standing right in front of Jeff on the floor. And when they hit that first note, man, the crowd went wild. I am telling you, Rod Stewart was on the top of his game. You shook me. Old Man River, Rock My Plimsoll. These were some of the songs that I had been hearing off the, the record, Shapes of Things. 
The sounds that Jeff got out of that Les Paul were unbelievable. With his bends and his pull-offs and hammer-ons and rundowns, he was way ahead of his time. Man, no whammy bars weren't invented then, but they could hit the, the low string and tune it down. <laughs> like that. Rod Stewart doing You Shook Me. You know you shook me, you shook me all night long. You know you shook me. Jeff's guitar solo on that was so fat and good. Oh man. So they finished, they each did one show, took a break. We hung out. So we had some time to kill and Jeff and I got to talking backstage. He was from Surrey, England, born 1944, so he was 25 at the top of his game or just coming into it, you know. And I was looking at his guitar and noticing his strings. And I said, Jeff, we've got to throw away the E string put the A on the E, move everything up, and use a Hawaiian G string to be able to get to bend any notes. And he said, oh, mate, you got to see this guy. And he pulled out a used package of Ernie Ball strings. And it said, custom package for Jeff Beck by Ernie Ball. And he said, here, you take this and hit this guy up. And I thanked him, and I later wrote um, to Ernie Ball. This was when he was just getting going, and he sent me three sets of strings, custom package for Forrest McDonald by Ernie Ball. It was such a thrill. So Jeff told me he liked to work on cars, and he was dressed in blue jeans and a t-shirt, and not at all flamboyant like Jimmy Page. He was, Jeff was a working class guitar player. Now when they got out on the stage, Jeff brought the call and response to many of the songs like Let Me Love You Baby. And Rod would sing Let me love you, baby. and Jeff would answer and then Jeff would go I don't know what I was floored more by, meeting Jimmy Page and the Yardbirds in April or meeting Jeff Beck in October. They were both unbelievable guitar players and it was a fabulous learning experience. There I was, a budding guitar player, had no plans of going to college. I was 18 and just out to see the best rock players there were. Jeff Beck and Rod Stewart were really accommodating. They were very nice. They let me take a lot of photographs of them and with them with my girlfriend Mary Baker. And then I had some great pictures of Rod from the dressing room straight across to the stage. I wish I had all of those pictures now. It was a great memory. So I just want to say, grab yourself a handful of blues Keep the love in your heart, keep a song in your head, and I'll see you down the story highway. Mm -hmm.